Sinestruck. Hi there, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some quote-unquote forgotten sequels on the Super Nintendo, and by that I mean games that you might think are played and structured in the same way their predecessors were, but they're actually completely different games entirely. A good example of this right off the bat is Super Adventure Island 2. Now if you've played the original Super Adventure Island, you might expect the second game to be more of the same. Run to the right, defeat enemies with a couple different weapons, ride the occasional skateboard, and beat the boss. However, Super Adventure Island 2 adheres to a more adventure-style structure complete with an overhead map that allows you to choose what area you want to play, upgradable armor and weapons, and yeah, of course, the 2D side-scrolling platforming stuff is a big part of the game, but the level design is a bit more opened up. The visual style and sprites are even tweaked a bit. So yeah, this is not just more Super Adventure Island, despite what someone might think going into it, and that's really the point of this whole video. Another similarly themed series that has a second game that might throw you for a loop is Joe and Mac. Again, the first game here is pretty straightforward platforming stuff, albeit a bit better than Super Adventure Island because it's two-player co-op, but it's your traditional platforming structure here. It did get a sequel in Joe and Mac 2, where it improves upon the original game in just about every way while keeping everything good about the original game intact. There's power-ups like spitting fire, you can ride dinosaurs, and there's even an overworld map that eventually enables you to do all sorts of wacky stuff, like find a woman, buy her flowers, and get married. The point is, it's got some unexpected aspects here that you might not expect if you've only played the first game. Some people may not know that Draken received a sequel on the Super Nintendo. You may remember Draken is a very early release on the SNES, a very limited Western-style RPG predicated on exploration and real-time battles, and it really does not hold up well from any standpoint. It's not intuitive, you have no idea what to do at any given time other than wander around and hope you stumble into something, and the game is just goofy. However, the sequel titled Dragon View is a much better game that holds up just fine today, and it's nothing like Draken to the point that I have a hard time referring to it as a sequel. It does keep the 3D exploration aspect, but each area you enter segues into a 2D beat-em-up side-scrolling style game, complete with magic and multiple weapons. This is a solid game that might be unfairly maligned because it's Draken 2, but it's a much better game than its predecessor. Moving on, even in today's retro gaming landscape, it seems like not that many people talk about or even know about Super Turrican, a fantastic side-scrolling run-and-gun title that rivals the likes of Contra 3, so I'm inclined to believe that even fewer people may be aware that Super Turrican has a Super Nintendo sequel, which features some of the best visuals of any SNES game. In addition to all the typical power-ups you're used to from the first game, you also get a bionic commando-like grappling arm, and you can commandeer vehicles. And you get to do all this with a truly kick-ass soundtrack. It's an expensive title, but Super Turrican 2 is well worth playing any way you can. MechWarrior was an ambitious title, putting the player in a first-person perspective controlling a battle mech robot where the SNES's Mode 7 capabilities enable you to make stuff go boom. The sequel, however, MechWarrior 3050 takes a completely different approach, switching to an isometric viewpoint, which while challenging, is pretty dang fun. It even takes a unique spin on two-player co-op, with one player controlling the top half of the mech and the second player controlling the bottom. Both of these games have their strengths and weaknesses, but I just wanted to point them out for the purposes of this video because they're so different from each other. And hey, if you like mech robots and explosions, these games are probably right up your alley. Another interesting contrast between games of the same series is Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 2 The Chaos Continues. Many of you likely remember the first game as a top-down adventure style game where you try and navigate your way off the island, and you will also likely remember that this game had no map, no battery save, and no passwords. Screw that. Jurassic Park 2 took a different approach with a side-scrolling run-and-gun shoot-everything-that-moves style game, which works that much better with a second player. The level structuring here is kind of annoying as it can be hard to find out where the hell to go, but still this is an unexpectedly fun co-op run and gun game. Another aspect to this forgotten sequels idea is that maybe the first game in the series just isn't very good, so you have no reason to even care about the sequel, even though it turns out to be a much better game. For example, there's Sonic Blast Man, a pretty standard beat-em-up that features some nifty moves you don't usually see in other 16-bit beat-em-ups, but it's really slow-paced and monotonous even for a beat-em-up, so this one ended up being pretty forgettable. The sequel, Sonic Blast Man 2, however, is two-player, adds two extra playable characters that are much more fun to play as, the game is much faster, and there's even more crazy moves moves you can unleash. I don't blame you if you ignored Sonic Blast Man, but Sonic Blast Man 2 is a solid beat-em-up along the lines of stuff like Captain Commando and the Pirates of Dark Water. 
Finally, there's King of the Monsters, which is a kind of fighting wrestling hybrid game made famous as an arcade game which later made its way to the Neo Geo console. The SNES and Genesis ports were uh, limited to say the least, you only get four monsters to choose from. The gameplay here is just lackluster, it lacks the oomph of the original arcade, and the novelty of fighting as these monsters wears off after a few minutes. The sequel, however, King of the Monsters 2, received a much better SNES port this time around, making it less of a fighting game and more of a side-scrolling beat-em-up. The settings you can destroy are a little more interesting, and the special moves are also pretty cool. It's not exactly a classic. The point is that it's a little different than the first King of the Monsters game, and much more worth your time. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.